Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Natalie's at Dawn. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whatever you prefer. And we are going to be having some exhibition matches in anticipation of next week's 2v2 tournament. So, of course, we're going to start off with 1v1s. Mostly because this was actually a thing. I think Ultra Godzilla requested I want to say Ultra Godzilla requested it. I honestly can't entirely remember. But I feel like they did, so we're going to go with that. So, yeah. Pretty sure Ultra Godzilla requested that I do this game between them and Raid. Raid going for jump bots. Ultra Godzilla going for shields on Wanderlust. And yeah, we will have some 2v2s after this. This will be this, and then a short 1v1, and then a couple of 2v2s. So there will be 2v2s to hype the 2v2 tournament. But yeah, if you haven't actually signed up yet, then go to the 0k forums. There is a 2v2 tournament. If you're still watching this within a week of it being posted on YouTube, or you're watching it on Twitch right now. Otherwise, it'll have already happened, and probably you'll have watched the videos for that too. So... That's next week. This week, starting out, Ultra Godzilla going in the shields, expanding fairly quickly over to the south, very rapidly getting their economy going. Raid, on the other hand, well, true to their name, I mean, not so much, they're getting more power in this top, but they are setting up for raiders pretty quickly. Although, it looks like they're getting puppies, but entirely for scouting and defense. Pyro over here, however, is going to be going to the southwest to try to take care of what business it can, because that is its job, is to go and burn shit. It's burning things! It burns all the things! Including my foul mouth. But we have still that... that it still has to come in and actually get through all this. There are two bandits. The shield isn't going to help a huge amount, but it is still there. And the lotus is going to help a lot. At the same time, though, puppies are going over to the center. But mostly just scouting out, seeing what what's available. What's available to hit. And that is a single... Actually, that is a single dead lotus. Hmm. Well, puppies are not useless. They are just risky. That being said, raid very, very quickly grabbing the center. That is the most important thing here. They have just decided, you know what? Just take the center. It's ours. It's mine. I I've got it. And why not? Because really, the center of the map is the most important part of the map in this. There's three, three metal per second extractors. If you can hold those, I mean, not only do you have the rest of the map, that entire half of the map, you also have the three most valuable metal extractors in this map. So, good going for raid. Same time, though, they are being raided quite effectively, and the puppies are, are going to be able to get the bandit. No, they're not! The bandit outranging them. That's right, the bandit does indeed outrange puppies. Doesn't, doesn't outrange the pyro, but unfortunately, being on fire is enough to make it not really live long enough. Also, weird side note, I don't know if I shall talk about this later, because I noticed that units on fire don't seem to be having smoke. I don't know if I've accidentally turned a widget off or something. I had to reset my settings recently. So, yeah, not sure what's going on there. Maybe there's a particle effect that's gotten screwy. Anyway, should double check that. Do that later. For now, though, Pyros setting things on fire and not finding much success either. As Ultra Godzilla maintains a really strong economy, unfortunately for them, again, energy being a major concern, they haven't gone for it quite yet. They are, however, getting solar plants in the south, so it's being fixed slowly but surely. The other problem being their factory doesn't have any caretakers, and overall their build power is not enough to use all their metal. Raid, on the other hand, doesn't have to worry about that right now. And honestly, Raid is in a position you see a lot of people in a lot of the time when dealing with these mid-level games, which is one of the players has a massive metal lead, but not a huge amount of energy and not a lot of build power by their factory. So the effect is both players are even. Raid and Ultra Godzilla are actually even. Raid is even slightly ahead just because of how much power they're putting into production compared to everything else that Ultra Godzilla is doing and how much they can put into production. At this point, Ultra Godzilla has indeed gotten ahead, but Raid has not fallen behind, and again, they have the center control. Raid's in actually a really good spot right now. And this outlaw is not going to be able to do all that much. It is going to go down, as will the Lotus. And the commander under some threat, but is a recon commander, so he can just run away. Or jump away. Needn't concern himself. Same time, though, Raid successfully raiding, living up to their name, getting rid of the Northwest expansion, which Ultra Godzilla, again, ultimately didn't need that much. It's a buffer expansion at this point. Sooner or later, Ultra Godzilla will be actually using that metal, but for now, it's just going off into the void of excess. And another pyro over to the south, helping to deal with more raiding. And overall, keeping Ultra Godzilla fairly contained. Or at least, that's the theory. As we can see, though, over to the north, Ultra Godzilla has pretty much gotten around that contain. Now, a couple pyros will be able to punish that. I don't know if Raid is aware of it, however. That's the one thing, and it looks like Raid is not, in fact. They will have... A bit of an unpleasant surprise. 
Same time, though, again, more power is coming into the back lines, and I feel like Raid is starting to fall back, fall behind. They still have 500 metal attrition advantage, so it's not a particularly large disadvantage, but it is still a thing to bear in mind. I mean, Raid at this point, they are not... They're not looking like they're actually heading to the late game. They're looking like they're trying to win now. And it's working all right. A lot of good rating is happening. Ultra Godzilla is losing metal that they can't afford to lose anymore. They are down to the point where it's actually with caretakers. They have no real storage. They are avoiding excess now. So this is good. This is what Raid wants to do. Unfortunately for Raid, they haven't actually really built up their own production capacity either. Just now getting a caretaker a little bit late. And even then, they could still use one more caretaker at least to be able to truly use their metal. But they're still doing fine, even with that. Still, Pyro is doing a reasonably good job. Placeholders, unfortunately, not so much. Not helping in the slightest. But the commander is able to come in here and not really feel any threat. I really would kind of... I would like to see moderators a little bit sooner. We are seeing... Mod no, we're seeing jacks being built up, not moderators. I would like to see moderators. That's generally a really good choice. Especially against shields. Because moderators deal slow damage, and any kind of status damage ends up just being damage against shields. So it's actually really effective. Of course, at this point, this is a dead commander. Recon commander from Raid is going to be going down. Ultra Godzilla just lightning gunning it to death. The Jack coming in to save the day. The question is whether or not it can, and the answer is maybe. The Jack at least is able to just tank through all that EMP damage, so shouldn't have to worry about it too much. And in fact, Ultra Godzilla's commander is not able to jump. Not, oh, 98% available on that jump, but not enough. That is not 100%. Ultra Godzilla loses their commander. Raid is able to escape with their own, but unfortunately, they did not continue moving, and that commander is under heavy threat. The outlaws are slowing it down, stopping anything from being able to save it, and that commander is going to go down as well. So, commander for commander, but Raid's case, that could have been avoided. They could have jumped. They, or they couldn't have jumped. They just could have walked. They just directed the commander into the base. That would have been death. That would have been it. That would have been, or would have been death. That would have been a survival. But unfortunately, that is not what happened. So, Raid at this point... Shorter commander, and that was a big advantage they had, actually. They losing that commander is kind of a kind of a bum deal. The upside, however, is that they lost it in their base. So the the worker here could go in and just reclaim all of it. I still dislike the fact that Raid lost their commander. It's just it didn't have to happen. And it does open up the center of the map. Because Raid, I'd say, relied a lot more on their commander than Ultra Godzilla. Ultra Godzilla wanted their commander just to project force and to have a little bit of extra firepower. Raid needed their commander to be able to maintain control over the center of the map. Raid has lost that. That being said, Raid is still way ahead in terms of attrition. Like, massively ahead in terms of attrition. I'm honestly surprised. What is the overall value here? Okay, so Raid just... They have 1,600 metal less used. Sorry, 1,000 metal less used, 1,600 less produced. Their army value is ahead by 1,200, but they are playing jump bots, which... I mean, that, this jack is worth 600. I mean, it's doing a lot for 600, but still, jump bots are usually worth a lot. This is almost, this is 900 metal worth of units with the pyros. Jump bots are high weight units. So it's hard to really gauge based on cost when you're dealing with a jump bot matchup. It's not irrelevant, it's just hard to judge based on cost. Also, again, why are you not building, I really wish they build moderators. They are building some moderators, but I mean, just forget pyros. Moderators are the way to go. Moderators burn through shields without any issue and don't have to worry about the outlaws range So moderators are the way to go raid has gone for moderators, but ultra Godzilla is still building up They're getting re getting some reclaim getting some good metal extractors. They're getting a lot of reclaim fed to them and they already had On the other hand raid is not going for reclaim on their own and they do have the production capacity or very nearly the production capacity to actually use that Just get another caretaker and that's exactly what they're doing I think this might be out of range of the other... They're trying to use the first Caretaker to build the second, but I think it's out of range. Still, the Caretakers, as they are... Like, this is... This is something Raid could still reclaim into. They can still get more power infrastructure. They can still get a bunch of reclaim. Their commander is right here. Remember, it's almost a thousand metal worth of reclaim right there, so it's not a problem. They just aren't going for it. And I really wish they would. I found it a little disconcerting that they're not. I mean, it's up to them, it's their prerogative, but it's one of those things I'd kind of like to see them actually take advantage of. Because sooner or later, it's going to run out. These moderators already are losing out massively. Because bandits are coming in. This is, I mean, okay, Ray was going for Pyro Moderator, and I do agree with that as a composition. It's just, unfortunately, the Pyros went in where they shouldn't have. 
Pyros going into shields is not an effective use of Pyros. Pyros going into bandits is an amazing use of Pyros. But if this is the exact opposite. If the monitors are down here dealing with the shields, and the Pyros are up here dealing with the bandits, then Raid is in a great position. But the opposite is happening, which is where Raid is finding loads of problems. And again, another moderator goes down for basically nothing. At the same time, the Pyros go down for basically nothing. So this is entirely a micromanagement failure. Or just a positioning failure. Ultra Godzilla is out positioning Raid, and Raid is also not reclaiming, not building up a lot of metal. They're trying, but they have so much reclaim available that they're not going for. That's right outside their base. And right now, it's harder to grab. It, it, honestly, I think it's a bit too late. They, Raid needs to do a lot more work to actually regain control over this area here where the Commander Corpse is in order to be able to get that reclaim back. But they're doing a lot of the work right now. I mean, this is part of that work, is intimidating away Ultra Godzilla. And really, apart from these bandits, there's not much providing any real resistance. But those bandits are providing real resistance, and the Pyros are not in position to deal with them. The Pyros are instead dealing with this space area down here that moderators could easily deal with. On the other hand, bandits are just wiping out everything in Raid's north side, so Raid has got nothing to work with. Raid is losing their metal extractors, losing their power plants, losing a lot of their units. I mean, Ultra Godzilla is catching up when it comes to attrition, and in terms of army value, definitely catching up. Only 300 metal behind, and again, shield bots are much more flexible, much less heavy. I'd say in a shield bot, jump bot matchup, you're probably looking at if one army has about, I'd say, a 20% lead. If the jump bot army has a 20% lead by cost over the shield bot army, it's probably even. So, Ultra Godzilla has an advantage. Especially for how Raid is approaching this, but the fact that Ultra Godzilla can attack on so many fronts compared to Raid for the amount of cost for them and metal in, into their units means that Ultra Godzilla is at a huge advantage. Now, at this point, these bandits are definitely being a bit of a pain. And they are... I mean, that's probably a bit more valuable than most, so maybe my 120% is possibly an exaggeration, but it does seem like that's the case. Like, these moderators are worth 720 metal. The bandits killing them are worth, like, 100, 240? 150, 150. And overall, this is like a thousand metal worth of units to get rid of a little under a thousand metal worth of units, and it's just entirely counters. And even then, the Pyros can't do all that much just because of their speed. They can jump in, but that's extremely risky. They can come in on defense, and that's nice. Pyro Moderator together is really powerful, but Raid is throwing units in one at a time, and as anyone who's watched my streams knows, I'm very familiar with that. I'm very familiar with the mindset that leads to that. I can totally understand where Raid's coming from. I mean, there's a sense of intimidation, feeling like your opponent is just winning, and you gotta try throw, throwing everything you have at them. And to be fair to Raid, they are winning on the attrition count. They're actually doing really well in that regard. But their economy is falling behind, and that attrition is the only thing keeping them in the game. And sooner or later, not even sooner or later, at this point, there's a twofold lead for Ultra Godzilla by cost. And again, I still think jump bots need to have a cost advantage in army value in order to be even. So I'm not sure what Raid could do at this point. They've kind of thrown away a bunch of opportunities that they had earlier in the game. They've got a bunch of reclaim they can still work with. So that's an option. But so much of their economy has been destroyed. The only thing they have going for them, really, the big thing they have going for them, though, they have a lot of energy, but unfortunately they haven't built the second caretaker. They generally have not been building caretakers, so they can't really turn this reclaim into units. If they could, there'd be a bit of a chance. Like, good unit choice, good micro, maybe would help out, but again, Raid has had a bit of a problem knowing where to put their units. Like, what, unit, what units can be used to counter what army? Ultra Godzilla, on the other hand, knows exactly what units to use to counter what army, so this is not going well for Raid at all. And this should be it. Ultra Godzilla going in for what looks like the killing blow. South side of the map, we have Thug Outlaw destroying everything that's been built up. North side of the map, the northern expansion is being wiped out by Thug Law Ball, supported by bandits. There's no easy way for Raid to deal with this, especially not with the economy they have. Raid valiantly trying their best to hold off, but it is only going to last so long, and that so long is pretty much now. Raid, they're trying, and I respect that, but this is still it. Raid... There's not much you can do here. Losing the south side, losing everything on the south side. The stinger's not even built up, and there's only one stinger left. This is, this is the last stand. Raid, trying their hardest. Monitor's coming up, doing what it, they, firing off, but that's again, 10 seconds. There's a 10 second reload time, can only do so much, and this should be it. The, car, the caretaker that took forever to build in the game just gets wiped out. And with that, I don't think there's much else that really can be done. Raid, should be just throwing in the towel any time now. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised they haven't yet. But as Ultra Godzilla's forces pincer in, Raid has got nothing left. There is 
no force. There is nothing being built up. There's no economy. There's a storage being destroyed, even on top of everything else. Just add insult to injury. I don't know if Raid knows where the resign button even is. I'm seriously thinking they're... They don't resign as a rule, and please don't. That's actually kind of rude. Like, this is the point where you resign. Uh, this is past the point where you resign, actually. Forcing your opponent to hunt down the last few units is rude. I keep saying this every time someone does... Thankfully, it's not very frequently, but whenever it happens, don't do it. It's rude. There we go. Okay. There's there's the resign. There's the tell. Still, I gotta hand it to Raid. Their metal use was always behind Ultra Godzilla, and metal use means how much was actually put into units. But their army value was always ahead. So Raid was doing a great job just using the units they had to deal with Ultra Godzilla. The problem is once it got to the point where there was a mixed Thug Law Bandit Ball, Raid seemed to be lost as to how to actually approach it. Which is a bit of a shame because they had the units. If they had just swapped the positioning between the Pyros and the Moderators, it would have been a win. Right, that would have been the entire army destroyed. But it unfortunately wasn't. So that was that. And the next match after this is going to be Pet Turtle versus JXG on Rogue's River, which is a new Rogue's River, actually. If you've seen Rogue's River before, stay tuned, because this is Rogue's River 1.2, and Rogue's River 1.2 has trees. So that'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned.